What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a shout out to our new Patreon supporters and YouTube members Magma Wolf 4464, Whiskey the Bone Fox, Super Mandible Claw, Sergio Talamantes Flores, David Edmonds, Joseph Vega, James Mason, Readout Productions, Just Some Loon, Gun Kid, ASE is Awesome, Ikoro, Marcin Makowski, Archion, John Fastolf 101, Jensen Awana Howe, Kazamaki's Father, Robert Wogtall, Oscuros, Master Dragon, and Pink Sprinkles. And I would also like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, the Anime Hybrid, Joshua Fix, the Yoyo Guy, and welcome our new executive producer, the Gimster 101. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, hit the join button next to the subscribe button down below. And if you want to join our Patreon, click the link in the description to find out more, and we'll see you there. Take care, guys. Uh oh. Well, well I found a dead body. Um, that I did. <laughs> Again. Okay. I am not self-reporting. I swear to fucking God. Oh, no, no. Are you serious? <laughs> you. I didn't suspect a thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. I, I've been playing some of that new Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, uh, 1 and 2 remaster, uh, remake. And Where you get up digitally. Yeah, that that's Boom. the only caveat. I, I see your caveat with it. I just I think, think it's, it's weird. cool, but at the same time, I miss, like, the blood and then you, like, getting yeah. up. Yeah. There's one track I gotta know if they brought back. Because I think it would be harder for them to get the rights now because the band has parted ways. Uh, they're still a band, but they're one of the other guys that has rights to their music is gone now. Like their lead vocalist, but I want to know if 96 Quite Bitter Beings is in there. Oh, CKY? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, may, maybe. So that was but my shit. That they was like said the reason that they I got, got most of the licensing back. Chance. Although, I will say this posting a video with the music in it is impossible to monetize yeah. because those songs. Like, we can always do the humming like, thing. Butter now, I think I did actually hear it whenever I was playing it. Hell yeah! But uh, but overall though, this uh, like this whole th uh, this whole thing with Tony Hawk Pro Skater getting remade and being pretty good actually. Yeah, I has, had fun. Has come with a little bit of the caveat of hey, yeah, you can't really play it with the music, so you can't really live stream it with that music and expect you won't to have the full experience if you live exactly stream it and that's what sucks dude yeah i totally uploaded that's my why video if, I, if i streamed it well <laughs> but, if i streamed it i would just do it on my twitch because all they're going to do is mute it after the fact so well true we can still experience but, it together like you know live but uh, but yeah overall though i remember when like one of my favorite one of my youtuber favorite youtubers tried to upload the video or actually he did a live stream and he left the it's live stream on up. there Ah, uh, literally it doesn't look like it. Literally, was. it was literally twenty six claims of uh, like audio claims, and the video was blocked, and like the the like the rights or the uh, monetization rights were split up between seven or eight different music companies. It's like Jesus Christ, dude! Like, I think that's shit. so weird. Like that to me is so weird. If it's in a video game. Well, it's not like but, people are just d illegally downloading your song or but, something. But like, and yeah. you see, it, it. This is why I think there should be a new a new listing for like public listening and stuff like sort of like how public radio was. Mm -hmm. People were allowed to play stuff on public radio, take requests and stuff like that. And musical artists were pretty much like uh, like more than happy for that. And what I think should happen is effectively, it should run through Spotify or something like that, and the artists get credit for those plays. And thus, they in some way get advertising right, get advertising payments or something like that in some way. But it shouldn't be held account like you shouldn't be held accountable for having it playing in the background. For instance, it's actually one of the oldest. Videos. You remember that Charlie bit my finger? Mm -hmm. uh, there's music playing in the background of that video that the people who own the right to that song are saying, "No, we own all the monetization rights to that video." To which the people who posted the video said. Uh, no, you don't. And it was a huge legal battle, and the people who uh, did Charlie bit my finger eventually won. But yet, it was like two years in the court system, and and tens of thousands of dollars literally spent on this one lawsuit over one video that's like a minute and a half long. 
You see, this is the whole legality thing about trademarks and law. You know, again, I have my my things about it, but at the same time, I understand artists. You know, who put their stuff out there deserve rights and the ability to make money off of their music. But at the same time, when it's something that trivial, that that asinine, it literally makes no sense for them to hold it to that standard. I understand if people are uploading raw, full versions of the song yeah. to YouTube without the art, original artist's permission and are monetizing it and making money off of it, that's one, that's, like, I am all against that. But if it's someone who is, like, uploading, say, a video of them playing a, a game and in the background you can only hear the music a little bit, but yet, because you can only hear the music a little bit, the company can come along, claim that three seconds worth of that video and immediately everything now belongs, everything that video monetization-wise now belongs to that one company. All the jokes, all the dialogue, everything that happened, player interaction, all that belongs to that one studio. That's bullshit. No matter how you slice it, that is bullshit. You know? But it it is what it is, though. I mean, there's nothing we can really say about if it. If I ever do my own gameplay, like, uh, channel again, I'm probably going to, anytime that happens to one of my videos, take it down and re-upload a thing being like, fuck this company in particular. You do not own the rights to all of my gameplay and my jokes and the money that you're going to make from them. This will be on Vimeo, and you guys can check it out there. Yeah. Well, it's like, because fuck you, I ain't going to let you make well, the money off of effect, it. But effectively, this is why I like groups like The Midnight, because The Midnight released... Dude, I was about to bring them up. Yeah, because mm. you, you, you sent me that. It was The Midnight pretty much saying, yeah... We love it when people use our music in the backgrounds of their gameplay videos, and we will never, ever claim them on Twitch, ever. And if like, it happens, it's not us. Yes, exactly. That's pretty much what they said. And that's yeah. awesome. That I, I love that. I love when, when artists do that, and artists understand that this is the new digital media that we live in nowadays. This is the new version of media. But I'm going to play P Tony Hawk, and I'm going to play my band underneath. Yeah, it would fit. Like yeah. have like have all the EPs from your band playing underneath. And it's like, hey, if you like the songs, there's a link to our Spotify. You can get them all. Some yeah. of them are free. Go yeah. at it. Have know. at it, y'all. But I, I just, you know, I can play some of your all stuff. Like I was thinking about that. How could I make it a fun, similar experience? Because it would be stupid as shit to do it with no music. That's fun of the yeah, game, you know. So I could like support local artists and like my friends' bands well, for and you shit. To throw a casket slam in there. If you want. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So. I should maybe do that. How cool would it be to like live stream when I get done with Resident Evil, Tony Hawk, and take requests from chat to like play local bands' music underneath it and like yeah. give them exposure and shit. That, I think that'd be really yeah. cool, man. I think that'd be friggin' awesome. <laughs> give more exposure to the local boys. Why not? Absolutely. Well, uh, send eleven thirty four a message and ask them if you can play their stuff. They're yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. My favorite local bands besides my own bands. <laughs> Well, great stage performances. Oh yeah. Well, we have uh, we have a John Tron video queued up here. Why I brought up skateboarding and all that was because the title of this video is the Skateboard Kid. Or it'll be right here in the video. Oh the yeah. Skateboard kid. Yeah, right, right here. Pop. And uh, well, yeah. Anyway, we're catching up on a lot of the old John Tron stuff. We'll do like architecture lists and stuff like that. So be patient, guys. We'll get there eventually. But for right now, Skateboard Kid is on the horizon. Let's give it a watch. Here we go. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah. <laughs> I really would like to find out who did that that artwork for him and that the very logo. cool and see if we can't get him to do Humanity's some of that stuff for you. Two longest lasting staples: the child, our legacy as a people, and the skateboard. I think it was made around the eighties and nineties. It's been around since then. So it's time we finally bring it's like these the sixties, bro, and like it late sixties, early seventies yeah, became popular. That's right. Today we're watching the Skateboard Kid, the film with the famous tagline, "Why take the rope when you can fly?" This film was made in 1993 and features the voice of the late Dom DeLuise, who was the voice of such characters as Jeremy from Secret of Nim and Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs. In this flick, he voices a character named Rip. So. 
focus and are just trying to drive the point home. All right, let's go waste some time and watch this, baby. I caught that for real. <laughs> Not bad. Oh god. <laughs> That's one flashy intro. I can't wait for what's to follow. The Skateboard Kid. Here we go. Oh! Songs by the Trash Kitten. What is that, like a kitten you found in the trash? Either way, great sounds like a meow with problems. Hmm, is that so? Power! It does appear the back of that skateboard says power. Why though? Why is this the first shot of the movie? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, right the strobe. I remember when I rented out my local laser tag for the night of my birthday. Okay, Max. Let's rip. I'm a pretty cool dude. And that's just the facts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have some sort of coordinated plan here besides just floating oh. around. Wow. Yeah, he had something really serious planned. Also, skateboarding inside all slowly like that is just, well, it's impractical at best, and it just makes you look silly. He did say, let's rip. So. Get your wig. Get your wig. Come and get a tasty little chicken wig. Okay, so their master plan was just, I guess, to mess with this guy who literally just stands there and says the words chicken wings over and over. Chicken wings! And they must have planned it in advance because this kid hooks up the police car like he knows the police is going to chase him. Why don't they just pick another target, you know, like out of the cop's line of sight? Hey! Hi, little chicken boy. First of all, that could have used some work. Second of all, <laughs> yes, it could have. pain and humiliation I feel daily are immense for someone like you to Cut someone like me deeper. Well, you must have problems yourself, buddy. So I feel bad for you. And how fucking dare you say that to me? I'm gonna make you regret your goddamn words. <laughs> so interspersed throughout the movie are these strange shots of skateboard tricks, like all these shots they coordinated with the airplanes. I'm assuming they just rolled up to LAX and did this before the security showed up. I mean, after the tricks they do aren't even that impressive. They're just jumping around. That's like nothing but ollies. There's no kick flips, no nothing. It looks like they're not even landing half of them either. Skateboarder? Or perhaps this is a tribute song to the life and times of a man named Scott Border. Mr. Border's gonna really appreciate this. I just feel it. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be great. Scott Border. Here's the Scott Border! Almost Whoa, him shit, him bruh! It didn't happen. I feel like in the real shot, that was just as dangerous as it looked. Yeah! yeah. Hmm? Yeah, whatever you say, Dad. Wait, I know him. That guy. I know him. He's in a bunch of 90s movies. Yeah. How slow are you guys going that these kids can just roll up to your car window? That's going to kill me now. Damn it. Oh, my God. I guess he really shouldn't have been wearing that chicken mask while skateboarding. You killed him. Why do you cross the road like that? Get to the other side, you Barney. Yeah, check out his stupid picture in your face. <laughs> yeah, also, Barney. Our friend is actually dead. <laughs> Oh god, it's those post mortem spasms! <laughs> Very funny, guys. Oh, you were never dead! I know it! I know where he's from! He was the step he was the stepbrother to Kevin Coster in Field of Dreams who was trying to buy the farm out from under him and and ruin the baseball field. Oh my god, my fucking brain. Holy shit. Dude, I've only seen you in this state a couple of times. Oh, Usually no, you just no, fucking pop that shit off. I was having trouble in that one Rick and Morty episode when we heard the conductor of the dream of the like the the stream of con the train of consciousness. I was just like, who the fuck is that? And then eventually <laughs> I was like, fucking Paul Giamatti, of course. Good fucking god, I'm an idiot. <sighs> yeah, I, I pride myself on on being a pool of useless knowledge and knowing faces from movies and everything like that. It's I, a I, deep pool. Fucking Olympic sized deep pool. pool. Yeah, an Olympic sized swimming pool full of useless stuff. So it's not really useless when you run a YouTube channel based off pop culture. So. Yeah, kind of. It's just. Good God. Quit counting yourself out, kid. <laughs> sure thing. Not at all. That was just a trick. A dirty trick by some dirty boys. <laughs> dirty boys. You did it? I was. But then you took your mask off. Oh. Those you gentlemen uh, know where Milk Creek is, do you? Well, well. Milk Creek? Uh-oh. Have you ever heard of Milk Creek? Something tells Something me they don't know too much about Milk Creek. There is a Milk Creek. You know, it's back that way. Really? You know, it's 40 miles down that way. Then you make a right. 
So was that a sarcastic answer? I'm not sure how to take that. Oh no, there it is! It really is back that way! So why was his answer so weird and then he runs away? Thanks for the directions, dude! And where are they skating to? Do you to? get to 50th Street Station from here? Uh, yeah, you go down 10 blocks that way. Make a right, you can't miss it! <laughs> <laughs> Are you filming? Are you with him? What shall we say? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the thing you're looking for is staring you right in the face. Well, Mom sure used to say a lot of things that hold very little relevance to most situations. I'm telling you, I got a good feeling about this place. You'll see. You're gonna love this sound. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you no. think so? You, uh, whatever. You won't be needing that. You'd anymore. have heard that. No, no, that, you would have heard that. Look, bro. Any sane person would have heard that falling off the top of their vehicle. Who needs logic? Bo right. Boss Hog went on a Jenny Craig diet, and here he is. Not only that, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you would perceive that out of your peripheral vision as yeah, well. Yeah, you'd see that just be like, huh, someone's carrier off the top of their vehicle just fell off. Glad we still got ours. <laughs> Good God. Ugh. Anyway, Whoa, hey, actually, actually, you know what? Grandma? I got one better. I got one better. Did you see the one where those guys were actually like stowing away in the top of this one family's car? And it was, they literally yeah. carried, this family carried these two guys up in the top carrier across like three countries in Europe. Just, they were just staying up there. And then they got called out. They opened the thing. It's like, where's our stuff? What did you do with our stuff? And they're just like, we don't know. We don't care. And they just like ran off. It's like. Holy shit! I could actually hear. I could actually see that. It's just like it's like. I can't wait till we get to. Oh, oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh, god. oh! I think I broke my everything. Yeah. Oh god! I shouldn't have hopped in here. Jesus they would have Christ. been blended. Oh dude, compost, fucking composted. Jesus. All right, back to it. We need that anyway. You just start her up. And do Whoa, hey buddy, listen, Grandma don't need no help. She's about to get out there, start tearing up some asphalt. Just clear the way. Bye bye. So now we meet this character, Dan, the usual sleazy car salesman type. Oh, oh, oh. Seriously, he's not even doing it that well. This is like what I do no. at home when I think no one's watching and I'm pretending to be cool. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> 91 degrees here in, uh, in, in Milk Creek. Wow. Well, you're just a real waste of fucking human life, aren't you? <laughs> Want to talk? Damn it! Come on! So next we cut to the kids from earlier messing with a neighborhood girl. Oh. Shut up! Uh, Back off, Snake! Oh, Snake did not expect that. But you startled him. He's like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh, Christ! <laughs> so I guess the implication is that the father is doing poorly at his new job, so he was sent to direct a commercial? But isn't that like an upgrade? I don't know. Yeah! yeah. From weatherman to upgrade? From weatherman to director? Hell yeah, it's not great. Hmm. No, you didn't. She hasn't paid for it or something like that. Not my concern. Wait, what? What are you doing over there, Zach? 
No, no, not wait one minute. I gotta know what you're doing right now. What? Oh, I'm serious. Did, did, you, did you break something? Did you do something illegal? Who are you? <laughs> it's not even obvious to the audience what's going on here. How exactly has this kid, Zach, figured out how to fix her anomalous electricity situation the moment he met her? Oh my god, lady, he's drinking your fish! Oh, you're just fine when I'm drinking your pet fish, and that's funny! Okay, you. okay. That's a joke! First Maria. off, first off, that fish would pretty much be dead because that's lemonade it's in, and. It's not able to process certain things like I just the sugar and the lemon. I feel so and... bad watching this. I do too. This, Honestly, I wonder what the budget was. After we're done with this video, I'm going to look the budget up on this. Taco Bell budget. And I want to know how much was spent on this, how much was wasted on this, and whose cousin, who clearly has some issues, wrote this, directed this, and made this a thing. I want to know. Also, this was what part of the plan? You, you did that first. You, you went and first thing you put her pet fish in the drink first of all, assuming that she would be okay with her pet fish dying and that he would drink this at all and not see the fish. And also, when you broke the glass with the rock, how did you replace the glass? Were you carrying an extra glass with you to put on there? Sometimes the thing you're looking for is staring you right in the face. <laughs> oh my God, are you my ghost mom? Are you now, what can I do for you? Huh? Excuse me, what did you just say? Well, I'm not going to let my hero get out of a place like this without a reward. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the film said two in one! Oh, extra strange because she just said the thing his mom said! So, since Zack's skateboard has been broken by way of being delicately punched in actual half, she decides to give him another one she has just lying around. Holy hell, that's a friggin' like. That's not a skateboard, that's a. <laughs> what did you. See, blow the other way, maybe? Excuse me? Oh, oh, sorry about that. What's that supposed to be? This is crack. <laughs> <laughs> So then, like, immediately after this scene, there's a montage of him cutting up a bunch of shit and putting it on the skateboard. Why? What prompted this? I mean, shouldn't there be a few scenes where the kids make fun of it first or something to give him a reason to work on it? Like, I don't know, if one of them said, Wow, that skateboard looks pretty stupid objectively. It looks like some sort of clown board. And then Zack was like, I'll show you. I'll make the best skateboard of all time, and then I'll kill all of you and hide the bodies. I mean, wait, not that last part. Like, he literally even just goes and slaps a motor to this thing out of okay. the for no reason. <clears throat> and it's not like he was established. A boosted exactly board? Sort of this kid literally made a boosted kid. board. I mean, we're talking about the guy who has a hat that says wow on it, okay? Wow. Wait, is this kid Owen Wilson? Rummage time! You know what? I don't need to know about rummage time. So, Zach takes his new skateboard out for a test run when he runs into trouble with the neighborhood gang. Then, all of a sudden... Zach, Booby, it's your turn to attack! What does the man do? right now! I am not I'm here! through a movie. I am not here! The skateboard begins to speak. What does a man do then? Don't sweat it. These guys are bodies. So finally, now we know what Dom DeLuise had to do with this monstrosity. You didn't have to do it, Dom! Before oh you my you god! Don't get me started! What is it, Skyla? I don't know. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. So now, as if the movie wasn't confusing enough before, we got a wisecracking skateboard from Brooklyn babbling half-assedly like he took too many Percocet this morning. Snake's got the right idea, though. Sit back, eat a taco, watch the fireworks. Huh? That's a sandwich. That's a sandwich, not a taco. You know, if like either way, guy here had a car. Snake's still the best fine. character, obviously. What, you're just gonna stop chasing your target now? This guy gets a little oil on him. You're all in hysterics. What are you actual paint. babies? So back at the house, Zach talks to his skateboard. Well, Rick. Hey, oh my god, what happened? Don't stop coming to me like that. How are you scared me? It's really happening. Believe it. That'll be a bit hard on account of everything about this. 
understand what I'm saying? Of course I do. I wasn't assembled yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, wait. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah I think you were, though. How I think you might have been assembled today. Grandma, the sky's the... <sighs> I don't wanna. It's weird and creepy. This little thing. It's like the main thing he uses to move stuff around. Did they just use whatever they had in the garage when they were designing this? Wait. Oh. Wow. This magical skateboard is mildly impressive. So, as expected, the skateboard and the boy become friends in a story as classic as the Jungle Book. And also, as expected, the dad is now a clown. That's precisely the problem, sentient skateboard! Why don't you go home until your mother just wants Hey, no, wait, my ball bearings are just loosening up! Oh, yeah, no chance she's leaving, Zach. Sorry, skateboard will like some young. Nobody asks you to stick your nose to my business. It is my business. My mom's the one who gave them to you. Maggie's your mother? Uh oh. Well, they ran the tests, and it looks like Jenny is gonna need the surgery sometime next year. I swear to God, movies always do this if the screenwriter doesn't know how to manufacture meaningful drama. It yeah. always comes back to mom's dead, my dad died, she needs surgery, my papa is a clown. So just a quick sum up, the Don't know about the has a lot of money and tries to woo the mother of this girl into marrying him because if she does, all her mortgage and medical bills will be magically taken care of. I'm sorry, but that, I, I'm, I'm distracted. By Mario sounds? That, the overworld sound track from so I was Mario, really Super like, Mario Man, I want to play Super Mario World now. Yeah. Me too! Damn it. John Tron, you see what you do to us, man? You see what you're doing here? Got so many other man. games to play. Don't be making me want to play nostalgia game. God dang it. Yeah, I Yeah, that's that. his job. <laughs> that's what I do. She resists, of course, because he's this, this guy. guy. Got a Frankie Frankie boy. boy. Your fate is sealed tonight. He barely, barely even made his target, his target with that throw. throw. Is it, is it just, just mandatory, mandatory to do things, things in a way evolution, evolution did not account for to be a cool skateboarder from the 90s? Yeah, that's just smart. Yeah. Jam all that middle in there. See what yeah. happens. Yeah. Huh? That what happens? Comes no, no, no. The dad no. comes home with the clown hair glued to his head. Another tragic scene ensues where Zack tries to remove it and things get real for a second. Take it off! Zack! It's your problem! Unbeknownst to Clown Man Boy, Zack has invited over the mother and daughter, making the clown hair situation extra hilarious, you know what I'm talking about. Should I take your coats or anything? Now I feel for the guy here. Uh, that's the worst, you just want to hang up somebody's coat in your closet. Look the couch. Couch! I mean, it makes you look like an asshole, embarrasses them for... It happens. One time, uh, I was trying to hang up a lady's coat, the uh, couch fell out of my closet. Couldn't look at me for a year. That meal was really good, but all of a sudden, I don't get it. Oh, God, what is going on in here? Oh, stop. Stop it. Stop it. Quit this. Quit it. More than a little creepy. Stop, you're freaking me out now. Are you? Uh, you're the one that needs the help, Tom. Agreed. So yeah, now Team Cowboy Douchebag has figured out that Team Clown Boy Good Guys are trying to steal the girls away from them with the lady hiding over here in the corner like some sort of abused housewife. And now, the rivalry between them is... Oh, some hot cop in the nuts. It's about your mortgage. Radical. So Dan the Cowboy finally convinces Maggie to marry him in order for her to pay off her mortgage and save her daughter. Jenny is reasonably upset at hearing this news, so the skateboard tells her jokes to make her happy. Flattery will get you everywhere. I couldn't agree more. It was like closing the greatest day of my life. Well, I don't get why you got married for now that you're holding the market too. I don't have even the slightest clue what you could have said there. Besides, we'll get great granddaddy's treasure back. You'll uh, get your great grandfather's uh -oh. treasure back. Hate, sorry so this was that. about treasure the whole time. Uh, you waited. Don't know what happened on our end, but apparently the remote just—I hit something on the remote there. Sorry. Did a herp derp a doobly derp. I hurt. I did. I did. The, 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 the. I I farted. I shit it even. <laughs> Good on you, man. Good on you. You shit them britches. <laughs> we'll get it. Great-granddaddy's You'll get your great-grandfather's treasure back? What the fuck? So this was about treasure the whole time? You waited 47 minutes for this shit? Wait, why'd you have to marry her for it then? It's in your family. 
What's she got to do with it? Does she even know about it? What's the talking skateboard for? Who's the talking skateboard is? Great granddaddy left behind just for us later champs. So wait, you have the map to the treasure as well? Buddy, you're, you're all set. No! I got scared. It's a scarecrow. Figures. Scud. That's good shit right there. I'm gonna need every last drop of this. So blah blah blah. Oh, here, here. Here. Conflict, more skateboarders, a long story short. We're here at the wedding while Jenny hates her life. And this woman in holy marriage. Uh, hi, Donna. Where would he got there? You know what this cheer head. Do you, Maggie, take Dan to be your lawfully wedded husband? Awfully wedded, you mean. <laughs> that man has a sword and he's only married to get it. What? What? Is it true, Dan? Wait, what? Dan! Damn it, Dan! My answer's a treasure, Dan. Is that true? It's not about love, it's about sword of a treasure. Do you, Maggie, take Dan to be your lawfully wedded husband? No. I do not. Oh! <laughs> But why, why do you have to marry her for the treasure? They didn't explain it. Why didn't he just use the map? What does the treasure have to do with marriage? Oh, he can fly now. <laughs> I mean, it was on the fucking case. Yeah, I mean, it's not entirely unexpected, but still. Oh, okay. the skateboard broke and died. That's unfortunate. Oh, his hat really says mom upside down. That's unfortunate. Oh, I watched this whole fucking thing. That's unfortunate. I guess you could say it was staring him right in the face the whole time. Or at least it was staring other people in the face, but mainly if they were looking at it upside down in the mirror. Uncle Zach, you really are my hero. Yeah. It's a genetic. Okay. What chemistry did they have to merit them get uh, to, 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 uh, to, uh, Hmm. Wow. What a great film. And now, in honor of the true skateboard boy, I present you with this homage. <laughs> Get it, John. Who <laughs> we paid? <laughs> of men and birds. He was a boy skateboarding hand. Wait. That's from oh. the break. It's Joji, bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what up, Joji? <laughs> this episode of John Tron was made possible by the wonderful people at Audible.com. Now, if you don't know about that, oh, they are on audiobook. Oh, oh, listen to your audiobooks on oh no, I feel like we're watching the Giant Silent Bob reboot again. Nah. Uh, this month I recommend to you The Revenant, a novel of revenge. If you've seen the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio recently, uh, The Revenant, it's the book that inspired the film. If you go to my specialized link right now, audible.com slash John Trump, it'll actually tell you a more realistic story than the free movie day days. trial. I implore you! I watched it. It was... <clears throat> yeah, the whole thing about, about that just... It was overhobbed. Hugh Glass... No, well, Leonardo DiCaprio was awesome in it. There's no getting around that, but... Fuck me, dude. The movie is a whole... They changed up Hugh Glass so much from his real-life counterpart to where it's not even... It's not even comparable to the... They changed it up so much, dude. What was it? Uh, The Revenant. Revenant With Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I've seen it. It's... I got shot. I'm cold. 
It sucked. I'm alive. I heard it was supposed to be pretty awesome. I got attacked by a oh, bear. I'm the alive. The visuals in it are amazing. I mean, yeah. it, I mean, in terms of like frontier life, it's probably the most accurate portrayal. Ed Hardy tried to kill me. Oh, God. Uh, Tom. Tom Hardy. Or Tom I'm Hardy. so pretty sure that I would prefer to watch Skateboard Kid over Birdemic or Talking Cat. No, that's no, that's perfectly Talking logical. Talking Cat, man. That's perfectly fucking logical. Given what we saw from Talking Cat and from Birdemic. And this movie was weird, but considering some of the shit I see and I saw back in the nineties, come to think of it, it's pretty par for the course. Yeah, like, there was yeah. a lot of stuff that just had weird ass shit happen for basically no reason. There's always been a lot of fucking like love stories that had essentially no build up. Like, yeah, none. And like the bad <clears throat> things about it are just cliches of like the nineties. Yeah. Or yeah. Earlier, you know that like. We let slide all the time. Just you know, for the, entertainment. There's, there's reasons, actually so. a movie that came out in the mid. It came out in the early '90s, actually, called Gladiator. Not the Russell Crowe film, but it was about underground, like underground boxing. It had Cuba Gooding Jr. in it. It had a uh, Brian Dennehy from a uh, uh, freaking uh, what the FX movie. Uh, mm-hmm. they, just a pretty good cast overall. Uh, it had Ossie Davis, Robert Loggia, just a lot of really good actors, but. They tried to be like pretty much Rocky in the 1990s, minus Rocky V, which tried to be Rocky in the 1990s. But instead, it was Cuba Gooding Jr. And uh, this, uh, did you ever see A Few Good Men? Yeah. Uh, you remember the uh, younger uh, uh, Marine who got put on trial, like the not uh, Dawson but Downey. You know, mm-hmm. the, it, uh, him. He was the other lead in it, and it was actually pretty good. But it's just. It tried so hard to be Rocky. And I'm like, they did this way better 25 years ago. Or like 15 years ago. You don't have to try and do this again. Yeah. I don't know. The 90s were weird. Just like any time. And and they had that... They had like the 80s training montage. Like like Rocky. Except it was like both of them like fighting each other. It's just like, what what was gained here from from this training montage? Literally nothing. They just beat the shit out of each other for like... For like a solid minute in the montage, and had a bunch of dudes like jumping around in the background, like "Whoa, that was awesome!" Like, yeah, it's like, what, what is even, what even is this? And there's there's so many movies from the '90s that you can just tear apart. Yeah, like fucking all of them, but that goes for like most movies in general. Well, at the same time, there were some movies in the '90s that were still really good and hold up today. As yeah, well. yeah, like so. Schindler's List. Wasn't uh, that a Shaw- 90s? Shaw- Even, like, some movies that weren't really supposed to be, like, high budget, like, you know, like, Disney Channel movies and stuff, like, fucking Halloween Town, the first yeah. one. Yeah. That was actually um, pretty good. Hocus Pocus. Uh, oh, yeah. I've still not, Brink, I've actually not like, finished Schindler's List. Brink was, Never like, been able to make it through it. finish. Brink's cringy in retrospect because it was, like, aggressive in line was going to oh be a Oh, my thing God, dude. You know, but and then everyone threw him away. Honestly, like, come to think of it, like, when I think back about that movie, I'm like, at least the movie kind of made sense for what it was trying to be. Don't be a sellout, bro. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. That's and pretty that's, much and it. Be true to yourself. That. It's yeah. like, or if you are, a, you know, if you're going to take a sponsorship, <laughs> take it for a good reason or something. You know, just like, try to help point people. Out the irony shit. of Brink. Don't be a sellout. Brought to you by the fucking Disney Corporation. Yep. That, <laughs> that is pretty yeah. ironic, man. Yeah. Um, Even then, that's ironic. Uh, and then Johnny Tsunami as well. That was another one. Uh, Punks was another one, Punks, too. Yeah. Gosh. So many. Smart House. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. With friggin', uh, the luck of the Irish. <coughs> yeah, oh, I forgot about the luck of the Irish. Uh, what's the one Xenon uh, or something like Xenon, that? Xenon, uh, yeah. girl of the twenty first century. Yeah, I, um, I like the first one of those movies, but I've never seen it again, so I don't know if it holds up or not. Well, I know that there was they did three of them, and a lot of people say the first one's like the best one. Don't look under the bed. Yes, yeah. I remember that. I was that thinking was about it the other day. Oh man! I still want to watch that movie again at some point and see if it holds up as terrifying as it you know, was as a kid. You know, we can uh, actually do this, dude. We can actually uh, instead of doing like a like a reaction, like we can do reaction to it if we want to. But I'd like to do like us sitting and talking about it for like a good like like. Did this hold up? No. The special effects hold up? Kind of. Did the performances hold up? Oh, absolutely not. Do you still like it? Absolutely. Yeah, you know I love doing the retrospective shit. Oh, yeah. so. The other one I've always wanted to see again as well, because I remember really liking it as a kid, uh, and it features someone who I 
actually gained a greater appreciation for after the fact of seeing it because I had never seen Nightmare on Elm Street before, but the paper brigade. Yeah, dude. Yeah, oh yeah. My gosh. Uh, Robert but, England was yeah, definitely yeah, the man in that. Crazy old man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the crazy paintball guy. Ready to go yeah. to war, dude. Yeah. Skedaddle. Yeah. Skedaddle. I fucking love that movie. Uh, it yeah. had the one kid uh, that had a. You, you ever seen House Arrest with? Yep. The same kid from Paper Brigade. But he was holding his parents hostage in the basement, mm-hmm. and it was like, "You need to work out your freaking issues before we let you out." It's like, okay, and, and it's just, and it's, it wasn't the fact that they wanted them to stay together. It's just like, just work it out, man. We just want to be, we just want this to be done and over with. And blank like, check. Oh yes, remember that? Forgot about that too. You want to know something? Sinbad, dude. He was the fucking man. Yeah, that the, the freaking blank check. That movie. I will never forget the movie, the next movie I saw, that kid in it. It was literally a movie where he was a child psychopath serial killer. What the fuck? And killed, like, everyone in the movie. I've got to look that up. And he just, like, bat, like, like, the opening of the film is disturbing as hell because he pushes his little sister into the pool and she drowns. The dad comes home, he puts a tripwire up, he trips inside, and then he bashes his skull in with a fucking baseball bat. Throws a throws a, a hair dryer into the bat into the bathtub with his Bro. mom. Like holy shit! Damn. Sinbad's not in that. No, no, not no. in blank check. No, you're thinking house guest. Tone Loke is on there. Yeah. I'm thinking about so Sinbad I'm... in like uh, where he house protects guest. this the. House uh, guest. Is that where he protects the president's son? Oh no, that's a uh, that's a uh, first son. First son, yeah. Or, yeah, it's not I the first time it. somebody's thought Sinbad was in something he actually wasn't in. Yeah, no, I know. Shazam, for instance. Everyone thinks he's in Shazam, Dude, but it's Shaquille O'Neal. I remember a yeah, version of Kazam, Shazam. too. It's called Kazam, not Shazam. I, rem- yeah. I remember yeah. a version with, with him, for yeah, everybody sure. Everybody thought there was a, uh, gen- a let's genie see. movie. No, I do, Sinbad. for sure. Yeah, there it is. Blank check, 1994 Yeah, Tone film. Loke is in that. Yeah, Tone Loke, uh, but uh, Bons- uh, Bonsel, there he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Bonsel. Uh, oh, he's a rock musician. Cool. Uh, let's see. So he, ah, uh, what was the? Mikey, that's it. That's literally it. Oh my god, dude, dude. he's not. This fucked me up, dude. He's not just in any fucking rock group, dude. He's the lead singer for the Ataris, bro. Oh shit. Yeah, Holy he's god. not just like any what the fuck my brain is blown <laughs> right now just holy like, holy shit really <laughs> the guitar there it is holy fuck dude oh he was in him but now he's he he's out of it he's out of him now yeah oh, wow when uh okay yeah dude they've had a lot of fucking members yeah they have uh, the only member who's stayed free is the ro- vocalist and the lead guitarist. Mm. Or ro- rhythm guitarist. Dude. Holy shit. What? I I don't know. Well, there you have that. that I, I, My mind just got blown down too. that rabbit hole. Mine too. Just like, holy shit, dude. That just... We've gone on a journey. So he's a musician. Though. He's not just he's a musician. musician. He was in the fucking Atari. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh, welcome to the uh, Wikipedia wormhole. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. God. So Rab- Rabbit again, hole, wormhole, whatever you call it. Yeah, I, I, either way. Good God. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a, an interesting one, to say the least. This uh, was The Skateboard Kid by John Tron. If you want to see more from John Tron... Click his name in the title of the video, and, you know, also, if you want... I'm going to leave a leave a like on this video as well. Uh, you can be part... Oh, John, uh, yeah, John's at 6.38 million subscribers. Nice, nice. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, I want to see him get to 10 million, honestly, because... 10 trillion. Uh-huh. Give him all the subscribers. Success for everyone. Yes, success for everyone, guys. Success. So, again... If you want to see more from John Tron, click his name in the title of the video or click the link in the description to take you to the original video. If you want to see more from us and you know what to do, you hit that subscribe button, you ring that bell to stay notified. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. I am Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.